Monday, April 24th. Uh, we're going to talk about Outsiders, which we're going to help you guys out. We are going to get to the quiz. That's one, not till the end. And two, I turned it into a take-home quiz. Uh, the reason being is I would much rather get a chance to go over the information with you than try to make you struggle. So I figured if we talk about the four chapters and what happened and try to make you guys understand it, then I'll let you guys take quiz. And as long as it is turned in by midnight, you should be good. My goal is to give you like the last 10, 15 minutes of class. So if you read, you should get quiz done before you leave. If you didn't finish reading, then this gives you a bit more time to try and read and hopefully make life a little bit easier or better for you. So I was trying to be nice to you since I was kind of gone for a few days. Let's uh, see, we're back from Camp T. I learn testing begins tomorrow. Uh, you will need charged iPads. You also need headphones tomorrow. It is English tomorrow and then English again on Wednesday. Thursday we go back to best schedule and then next week we have math. After that, we probably have NWEA because the state hates you. Oh, Book, not I'm not sure. I charged uh, mine. Rob is almost dead. It's at 59. Oh, it's not um, like I imagine you guys probably spoke with Mrs. Butts or other teachers about the whole camp thing, but yeah. since I just got back from camp, I wanted to make sure. Overall, it, as far as I could tell, aside from food waste, things seem to have gone pretty well. Uh, Globetrotters destroyed us with food waste, which I got to hear about at every meal, because they actually had several meals that were at zero food waste. I think they had five pounds total for the week or something like that. Three days. Anyway, uh, well, yeah, for their, for their time that they were there for the week. But us, not so much. Beyond that, you guys did fairly well. Um, when you guys all got together for stories, we struggled, but so did the Globetrotters. Uh, I think that is just Mr. kids Brooke, nowadays. Yeah, I'm not going to lie. Those stories were kind of boring. I know. Yeah. <laughs> like, you need to tell more other people. Like, those stories sounded so fake. Yeah. I mean, they're like, they're things that happened to them. Nah, they sound like, not they like, really so fake. Like, I'm not going to lie. I like them. Yeah, yeah, that. Yeah, that would be the first like, person to say that. Those stories were Um see from there hopefully things went well with your counselor. It seemed to. I do spend effort trying to make sure I put you as a counselor. I think you will get along with I got my I love my counselor. You're right. I love my counselor so much. Claire. I love my counselor. Both of them are my neighbors. Like what like I knew I knew Tommy, but Claire's literally like right across the street. We love Jacob. That's unfortunate because now oh, I know where you live. Oh, Mr. Oh, Broviak. Because I've been to their house for open houses. Mr. So. Broviak. Why, 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 I like my counselors. To job, James. <laughs> I got Aiden's me, number. Me, me. Yes. His contacts are me. We text oh. with each other all the time. We're going to hang out. And I blame you for that because I hate my group and I wanted to I put your friend in your One friend. James. Yes, that's all I said you could get is one friend. I liked my group. Okay, I had two actually. Oh, my oh, I did. Oh, I got two. I had no friends in my group. Oh, hey, slide me. Slide me after class. Just ask him. Just ask him. Let's. Oh, yeah. um, um, Oh, I don't think there's anything I need to add to my camp talk for next year. I had kids say I should talk about the pig bucket, but I don't think you guys, before you go to camp, the pig bucket would not mean much. So I figure out that. I think I hope the explanations work well. And in three years, you get to be a counselor your sophomore year. If it is the thing you want to do, so you cannot do it next year. Cannot do it your first year of high school, but it is your second year of high school. And what we look for is grade wise, you just you should have like A, one C, then the rest should be higher than that. And the reason being is that we get in trouble if we take a kid out of school who is not doing well, so your grades have to be at least good enough that we don't get yelled at. Beyond that, uh, don't get in trouble with like the dean, so don't get yourself referrals or tons of detention. Um, and then no, try not to be a turd. Now realize, many of you are turds now, but also realize most of your counselors were turds in seventh grade. Uh, most kids tend to be somewhat turdy in seventh grade. And the idea is how much do you grow from your current turd level to when you become high school and you become slightly less turdish. So we'll figure out from there. And then if you were not aware of it, my kid was a counselor there. 
Uh, yeah. And so I figured, for those of you who oh are God. unaware of it, I would throw it up there. <laughs> and then to fully embarrass my kid, yeah, this is their grade or their picture from this year. And then I went all the way back to seventh grade with all of their little pictures I was able to find and pull up. Toe hater. She was on my team. Yeah, oh toe hater is their um, social media that they went with. So it's, oh God, it's better than their previous ones. Um, beyond that, I'll cover it. I already asked for permission for the moss. We're going to go there. I think that's as far as camp goes. Oh, I know the other one. Because I, I stalked you. I found the other one, but it's an interesting name. Yeah, that's now been changed to Toe Hater. Because, yeah. It was what? Hug you, person. Uh huh. Oh, yeah. And I kept saying, I'm like, I am not tagging you in any of my social medias with that name. Soggy abortion. Yeah, I have a special <laughs> child. Yeah. Uh, if you didn't pick up on it, at one time, my kid was a little um, alternative and different. Um, and then has slowly not as been as thrashy metal as they went through a pretty big phase there for a bit. Still there. We still wear spikes, but not quite as much. Last week, hopefully things went well in here. I did not hear any negatives from the subs, so I'm assuming either you guys were good or you were right. Uh, I'm going to ask some go you guys there. Hopefully video things paid off for you somewhat did overall. She, uh, so we can sort of walk you through and help you out on that one. Hi, James. Did she say anything about somebody listening to music? Why? What was she upset? Oh my gosh. No. His music was blasting. It was so loud. I was like, be quiet. Oh. You told it yourself. Yeah, you weren't even here. She wasn't just told. That's how much she did. We were just walking along a trail and all of a sudden Mr. Ogle was like, is that James's music? And I went, no, there's no way we can hear it from here. And he was like, I think it is. And I was like, oh, that James. Uh, so, before we get to quiz, I'm going to go back and try to help you guys with what things that happened in there. If you did watch my little videos, then you'll see some of the same things pop up. If you did not watch my videos, then they'll be new to you. We'll try to help you out. But my goal is to help you understand it before you take quizzy quiz thing. Let's see. For what were the cools that Dally stole? Cigarettes. 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 And then it mostly takes place at the drive-in theater, but they do talk about the drive-in restaurant where they go in for a moment. And then the drive-in movie theater, that's where they go to hang out. And then who is it they meet at the drive-in theater? Cherry. And? Girl. I don't know. The other girl. Oh. Other Cherry and the yeah. other girl. What's her name? Marsha oh, she I was does get to have a name. But that one girl with the bear. The one girl. Do you know that little kid show? It's like Louie? 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 Can I find the picture? Sure. Yes, I don't know what you're talking about. Um, it's called Care Bears. Oh, God. No, because there's no one called Care Bears. It's just the Care Bears yeah. right around doing Care Bear things. Oh, that's awesome. That one. This was the gas jockey they talk about. Let's go with Ah. Why were the girls by themselves? Because their boyfriend left. This one. Oh, like Marsha. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I know that show, but I'll take your word on that. Well, I remember that one, and, like the pudding where it overflowed and so on. It was like porridge, or no? Probably, I mean, that makes sense. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, it's like a Russian. You mean like oh, Russian? Oh, yeah. oh, like Russian. Yeah. Wait, you mean like three, the three little oh. bears? Yeah, the three little bears. Like, oh, oh, we're not looking at points over there. Hold you I don't Anyway. So the boys were drinking, and that's why they ditched them. They run into uh, Pony Boy and Johnny, and they do the talkie talk. Ooh, Dally comes over. Dally comes by. How does Dally get along with them? What does Cherry do to Dally? Uh, he, he brings her something to drink. Oh, and then Ali does a drink it, and then Marsha drinks it. She does. Marsha does drink it. And that's when Cherry yeah, throws it in his face. She's like, I yeah. would never drink anything you gave me even if I was starving in a pizza <laughs> desert or something like that. And she gets all yelly at him. And then they talk oh, about the oh. movies they were watching. Oh, yes, I'm sorry. Is this 1960s movie poster too much for you? Whoa! Whoa! <laughs> this thing that is from 60 um. years ago. So at one point, this was like their version of Marvel movies, and that was like a really big movie franchise that happens like all of these they were literally called like beach blanket movies and it was just a bunch of teenagers running around in swimsuits 
that would then have like shenanigans and hijinks that would happen to them and oftentimes they would get into drag races and stuff like that so these are the types of movies that they were look, watching so I went ahead and looked up the pictures of them oh it says when um, what's his name Tubit shows up that he's grinning like a chessy cat the Alice in Wonderland yeah. the Cheshire cat with the big grin because again Tubit giant scary, grin scary on the right bed but no bottom right I agree and then this would be uh, Tubit and Marsha because they're doing that weird flirty thing. They're talking about Arabian and talk Arabian to me. And it's awkward to listen to because anytime you see teenagers flirt, it is awkward. No matter how much riz a kid thinks they have, when you are watching it from the outside, it is awkward. And so what happens is Tubit has riz. He's talking to Marsha. But from the outside, you're like, ew, it's just like ucky. Um, that's pretty much what I have to witness all the time. Then like, don't no. listen. <laughs> then don't listen. It's not a matter of me not listening. As I'm standing in the hallway, it just walks by in front of me. Like, giggle, giggle, slap, 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 giggle, yeah, giggle. I've never seen you again. Yeah. I'll stab you. <laughs> Disturbing. Um, then they get into the talk about the weapons because this is going to show up later in the book. They talk about the weapons that the greasers fight with. These are heaters, not so much that one, that's what you guys use when you're at Camp Tecumseh. Oh that's the heater. They talk about beating each other with chains and then pool sticks. Not pool noodles, that's not going to do you much good in a fight. You might tell somebody. Uh, you don't know what a pool noodle is. You know oh, yeah, 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 like the pool There you go. The pool stick, that's what they use to hit each other with. And we get to, I just found fan art of someone drew a pony boy and Cherry talking. So That's a little bit disgusting. So Wait, no, stop, stop. Is it the flirting? Go to the next one, please. That's so bad. Please. How is that bothering you? Oh, it's like Ariel. It must be the point. It's cringy animals everywhere. So in the conversation between pony boy and Cherry, find out that the guy that beat up Johnny at one time, what is it he wears that makes him identifiable? Miraculous. He's got the big handful of rings, which is what allowed him to beat Johnny up so badly. It also allows us to recognize him when he shows up again later. And then again, there's all of your greasers now that you're getting a bit farther into it. And Johnny's Ralph. What, what? Johnny's proud? Ralph. Yes, Johnny he is Ralph and Dally. I know that because I'm like, what's his name? So, Go crazy. I'm actually like, so like, no. No, not like, no, like, I know stuff. I'm more Knowledgeable. No, wait, Knowing. Cool. Almost yeah. like the word smart. But, yeah. But not smart. Yeah, exactly. No, but like, in the world I am. In chapter three, I know stuff. they talk about the fact that the Socias all like the Beatles. Who is it the Greasers like? John Lennon. <laughs> Elvis Presley. Wait, I literally just guessed that. Elvis Presley. And so they talk about the fact that the greasers all like Elvis Presley. What was with the horse? Mullet. The dude. His name was like Pony Boy. Not Pony Boy, but you're close. Soda Pop. Soda Pop has. And what was Soda Pop's horse's name? Mickey Mouse. Mickey Mouse. And that's when he had to give it up because it turns out the horse didn't actually belong to him, but. That was Soda Pop being all excited. Who shows up in the Blue Mustang? Oh, shit. Bob. Bob and Mary. Oh, okay. There you go. Specifically, um, Bob with his big rings shows up. And his friend Randy. Randy. And then some other ones. Not Randy Marsh. That's a different Randy. They talk about the fact that socials have what's called a Beatles haircut. Back then, short hair was basically the main thing. Uh, looking like Dane, Drew, Mason, like your hair was considered somewhat normal length, whereas if you get into hair like uh, James's or Gavin's, it would definitely be considered long and shaggy. Uh, and so this was the Beatles haircut was anything that was like the long shaggy kind what of What about things. Biggie Ogle? Uh, Biggie Ogle's have been normal hair back then. You should get a mullet. He's okay. You should get a mullet. You should name the like Mustang the, the, the Twinkie. Like me. The Twinkie? We could match. Oh. Consider like, um, I was like, like, oh. <laughs> so then we have no! the <laughs> blue Mustang that shows up, and the guy who gets out, what do they recognize about him? Rain. He has all the rings, so we know one, 
he was dating Cherry, but what else do we know about him? He is the one that beat up Johnny, Cherry, and Marsha go home with them. And then, oh, it's almost gone. One more thing. It's not that bad. That's all the stuff you kind of draw. People don't make uh, glass bottles anymore because it was expensive and people used to die. That would be true. So it was more expensive and more dangerous, but that's what uh, two bit breaks to hand to him so that he can do the stabbing. Pony Boy's like, I would never stab anybody. Ooh. Oh, of course. On the way home, two of them end up falling asleep in the empty lot. Johnny and Pony oh, yeah. Johnny and Pony Boys, when they're just kicking back and staring at the sky like it's at camp. And all of a sudden they completely fall asleep until he suddenly wakes up and runs home. When Pony Boy gets home, what happens? It wasn't spoilers. We read it. Oh, you were supposed to. Yes, spoilers for the part you've already read. So with this scene, to walk you guys through it real quick. So on this one, one, how old is Pony Boy? Fourteen. Fourteen. How old is Derry? Eighteen. He's twenty. He is twenty. So just get an idea from there. Ooh. Um, currently, the what happened to the boys' parents? So they get to stay together as long as what doesn't happen. Nothing with the police. Nothing with the police. And then also, because I know a lot has happened, the previous day, the previous afternoon, what had happened to Pony Boy? He got what? Kind of. Beat it up. Beat it up. Beat it up from. The socias. So that's all in Derry's mind at this point. So now it is, I think it says like 2 a.m. when he got home. Yeah. So it was like 2 a.m. when all of a sudden Pony Boy comes in. This is what's been going through Derry's head. Because Derry's not a violent person. He's not a slappy kid kind of thing. But Pony Boy comes in at 2 a.m. This whole time, Derry's been trying to think about whether he should call the police. Because if Pony Boy got beat up by the socias and is laying in the ditch somewhere, who should he contact? the police to save his brother. But if his brother's just running around with friends and he contacts the police and his police go and get his brother, what might happen to his brother? He gets taken away. So Derry's sitting there at 2 a.m. going, do I call the police to save my brother if he's in a ditch? Or if I call the police, is that end up gonna getting him in trouble and getting him sent to a boy's home? Should I call the police? Should I not call the police? I don't know. And then in the middle of him having this big decision, Pony Boy walks in and does a full teenager do, 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 and just walks in and there's like, where were you? And he's like, chill out, old man. I was just sleeping down. And so he basically sasses poor Derry. Not everybody is good at dealing with teenage sass. And apparently Derry is one of them who turns to snap. And when all of a sudden Pony Boy sasses him, that's when Derry snaps and the, the old snap and slap. Uh, and so he did the snap and slap, which once Pony Boy gets slapped, what does he do? Runs away, which brings us to chapter four. When he runs away, who does he go grab first? Johnny. And then where do they go? And this is when they go to the park. And it talks about the water fountain in the park. Not like the ones we have in the hallway, but like the ones where you can go and throw pennies in and go splish splashy. So throwing it in there, splish splashing. It's like a wishing fountain would work for me. So there's our Pony Boy and Johnny hanging out. While they're hanging out in the park, who shows up? Bob. Bob. This is where the Bob and the other socias show up. I know this though. I did my best to show you what the socias would look like. <laughs> then, what is it? He is a big boy. That's Bob. Bob, the big boy. Uh, what is it the socials offer to do for Pony Boy? <laughs> they offer to wash his hair. And so here is where they put him into the fountain to wash his hair. Johnny, what is Johnny carrying with him? Knife. Knife. Because what did he claim earlier? Protection. So the last time he got beat up, what did Johnny declare? You would always carry protection because? <laughs> the next time he gets jumped, it would be over his dead body. So if this is Bob who throws Johnny down to the ground and Johnny has the knife, if this is self-defense, who is it Johnny should stab if Pony Boy is getting drowned over here? Pony Boy. Uh, 
He should stab <laughs> the all person of them. that himself is drowning him. him. So you oh. should be stabbing yeah. one of the oh. ones that is over here drowning Pony Boy. Is that who he stabs? No. no. Who does he stab? Oh. Now the problem with him stabbing Bob, now it's no longer self-defense. Because why stab Bob as opposed to the others? Because he was annoyed. Because what? He, he, him. Ooh. he beat him up. He's the one that beat him up previously. Oh, yeah. That's why he stabbed Bob. Now all of a sudden it's not a matter of him defending himself. Revenge. He kills Bob out of revenge and not self-defense, but of just becoming plain murder. At this point, Pony Boy has not broken the law. All he did was run away, get drowned, wake up and go blub blub. Here is where Pony Boy breaks the law. Because as soon as Pony Boy wakes up, what does Johnny say to him? He says, I killed him. I killed that boy. And he holds up the knife and says, I stabbed him. I killed him. As soon as someone admits a crime to you, you are obligated by the law to, tail, to turn them in and tell the police. I know, but I also got caught, so you don't need to tell the police something they already know. I was not good at getting away with my crimes. There and so here, Ponyboy, instead of telling Johnny to turn himself in, says, let's run away together, and here's where they both flee and take off. Johnny is now sad, and they are now on the run, because instead of turning themselves in, they run away. This is where they talk about the the um, blue leather, not leather jacket, uh, jean jacket. Thank you, jean jacket. <laughs> says that right there, but uh, Pony Boy gets it because he's so cold from getting drowned. If you've never seen a jean jacket, this is what a jean jacket looks like. Although I don't think this has as many sparkles on it. Never seen it's hard to go wrong with a good sparkle. And then they also talk about uh, when they find Dally. He is uh, staying at his friend's house who's listening to this music by Hank Williams. And Hank Williams is straight up hillbilly music. If you have Spotify and want to put yourself to sleep, uh, you can bring up Hank Williams and it is full on twangy country guitar. If you have not read chapter four, you're probably going to want to read that before you commit to taking quiz. Otherwise, if you have read chapter four, I'm going to let you get quiz done so that you don't have homework. So here's where iPad comes in, so I can give you guys the rest of the time to get it done. Home children, come back to life, we're taking quiz. If not, you'll take quiz tomorrow, and you'll just miss out on our fun together. Oh, tomorrow I recommend bringing your Outsiders book to iLearn. Since you can't be on your phone and you can't be on your iPad, they're going to tell you that you have to read. Is it Outsiders intro? Oh. Uh, I recommend I having a book with you tomorrow to read. I found it.